I'm remaking this video almost a year later, so it's gonna be much better. Ideally, a lot higher quality and much easier to follow as well. Mostly around the pattern drafting bits. And I'm making this video after the current trouser construction video, so if there are any discrepancies, go with what I'm saying here. Starting with making the trouser pieces. For simplicity, use a large piece at least 40cm wide and 40cm tall. At least. Chalk a line down the middle of it, and one 3cm from the top. Where your two lines intersect, mark about 1cm either side. They just need to be made even. Then, mark a point about 10cm down. Chalk from there to the marks you made. Straight or curved doesn't matter. On one of them, mark 3cm from the curved edge. This will be the back piece, and the 3cm is the inlay. You could sew a dart into the back piece if you wanted. If you were to do that, the dart starts at the inlay and needs to be mirrored on the inlay to allow it to fold down properly. Regardless, cut your piece into two trouser pieces and based on the inlays. Important for later, and if you were doing two, they'd be mark stitched. On the front piece, determine the line that you want your pocket to be. I suggest by first marking on the seam allowances, 1cm under the inlay and 1cm from the edge. Remembering that a normal pocket opening is about 17cm long and starts about 3cm down from the waistband, giving it a total length of 20cm from the seam allowance below the inlay to the side seam. Start 4cm from the edge, or however steep or shallow you want your pocket line to be, which is 3cm from the side seam, and find where your desired pocket length hits the side seam. Mark a notch where that line and the seam allowance intersect, and where the top of your pocket is going to be. Lay the front trouser onto a piece of fabric. It's important to match the grain of the fabric, not least if the fabric is patterned. Trace off the trouser edge, the pocket line, notches, and the inlay, and we'll make the blind. Mark a horizontal line 3cm below the notch, and 4 behind the pocket line. Cut it out around the trouser edge and the 4cm line. For the facing, you could lay the pocket line straight with the grain of the fabric, which will then necessitate the need for any kind of stay for the trouser piece, which will be cut on the grain. So, copy it off the same way, or with the pocket line parallel to the grain, with the notches, pocket line, inlay, but you only need to mark the bottom bit of the trouser edge. Start with marking a line 1cm beyond the pocket line. Mark a line 2cm below the notch and 3cm behind the pocket line. The point is to not have the blind and facing seam allowances on top of one another. Cut it out along the centimetre line beyond the pocket line, not the trouser edge. Usually you have two layers of fabric and by extension two mirror images of the same pieces. All that means here is that we need to flip one of these over to use it on our pocket and that you don't need to mark stitch the notches. Fold over your pocket, Celicia, and lay the trouser piece over it. Usually to draft the pocket, the bottom kicks out an inch beyond the top. Somehow I got it backwards, which is why the pocket is so small and the inlay is creating a dome rather than a downward curve. I make this point clear in the trouser construction video. Trace off the trouser as before, so pocket line, notches, inlay, trouser edge. Mark 2.5cm below the notch, from which you can draw in your desired pocket shape. From that point, too, as in also, chalk a 3cm inlay from the trouser edge line up to the top. Mark out horizontally from the notch across the inlay, and chalk a line 1cm beyond the pocket line, like on the facing.
Cut it out, first around the inlays in the pocket bag, then unfold the pocket bag and cut along that 1cm line and the horizontal line that we drew, making the bag asymmetrical. This is going to be a little different from how it will be done when we are making a pair of trousers. This is because instead of two sets of everything, we have one. For example, we would be mark stitching the inlays, pocket openings, and notches. What we're going to do with the facings is mark a centimeter on their inside edges. So not the pocket opening or the inlay sides, which are going to be ironed underneath. However, one has to be flipped. In my case, I'm flipping the facing. The blind goes on the trouser edge side of the pocket bag, three centimeters from the edge because of the inlay we put there. And by process of elimination, the facing goes on the straight edge. The two ways of enfacing the pocket bag are by felling or machining. I'd be remiss if I didn't show you both ways, but I'm sure you can determine when and where you'd like to use each of them. Hint, it's always the felling. To machine them, you first need to mark where the stitch is going to be on the silicia. Line up the facings against where they are going to sit when you're done, and chalk where the iron sides meet the pocket. Fold open the ironed crease and line it up on the chalk line. Baste or pin it in place, machine down the crease using it as a guide. Only on the long side though, stopping at the creased corner, because regardless, we are felling the short edge. Fold the facing back to where it's supposed to be and fell the short edge. When you're machining a pair of trousers, you'd usually have different colors of thread in the bobbin and on top. That way, it's both least visible against your silicia and top fabric. Just something to keep in mind. To hand sew the facings, align them to where they need to be, baste them in place, and fell them. You could do it with one continuous stitch if your thread is long enough. I'm also marking my notches onto the right side as, you know, I didn't mark stitch them. When it comes to French seaming the pocket closed, it starts inside out, because that's how French seams work, and working around the bottom of the pocket bag with a half centimeter seam allowance. Ideally, you're not going to sew over the facing, but if it can't be helped, you are seriously doubling up fabric. Machine the silicia and trim away the corner at the back and some chevrons on the curve. If you didn't know, if you don't do that, the fabric will bunch up inside of the seam plus cut away some of the silicia all around the edge in general so that there is less than half a centimetre beyond the stitching so that it can be hidden in totality by the other stitch. Flip it inside out and force the stitches to the edge and I might baste it if I weren't practicing. Maybe. Although, I don't think I did it when I actually made a pair of trousers. So maybe it would be best if we practiced with doing it. Sew it again with another half centimeter seam allowance. Chalk a line one centimeter beyond the pocket line on the trouser piece 
and cut off everything beyond it. Flip the pocket inside out, we're going to fix it to the front trouser. Line up the notches and, of course, the edge, then baste and machine between the notches with a 1cm seam allowance only between the two notches. You might find yourself with an easier job by chalking the notches on, making them more substantial. Then you want to cut the notches right down to the line of stitching to make your next actions possible. You might like to angle the cuts from between the notches, then cut away half the seam allowance of the facing in Silesia, which will reduce the volume inside the pocket opening. Fold the pocket bag into the trouser as it were, and pull out the seam allowances above and below the notches. Iron down the seam towards the pocket side, this will allow you to more easily keep the seam hidden. When we fold it over, we want the seam to be folded slightly to the inside of the pocket. Baste the front trouser in place, and it's at this point that I prick stitch it down, but I'm going to leave that to finishing for the benefit of structure. To fix the top of the front trouser to the blind, we want to cut away a centimeter of the facing in Silesia down to the notch. We are only sewing through the front and the blind. Fold the front bit above the notch under itself to create a linear line up to the top of the trouser. Iron it there to create a distinct followable crease. We also need to chalk the line that we're going to machine. So, align your ruler against the pocket opening and chalk a linear line up to the top of the fabric. Move the silesia behind the blind out of the way. Only the front and blind are being machined together. The best way that I've found to get these two bits together is to have it sitting the way it would be when it's done, holding them there, slip your hand in behind it, and just get your fingers to hold the seam in place and then fold the trouser out of the way. Still holding it in place, pin it for machining. If you want to check that it's in the right place before committing to machining, put a pin in along the seam and fold the front trouser back over. If it's wrong, just keep adjusting until it isn't wrong anymore. Replace the horizontal pins and remove the vertical pin. Stitch it right down to the notch. If the stitching is wrong, you can often just try stitching again without removing the first line immediately. And if you machined behind where you meant to, you won't have to remove it at all. Having successfully attached the front, pay attention. Or maybe it was just me that found the next bit particularly difficult to wrap my head around. There is a small cut that you need to make that will allow you to fold the silesia out of the way. You're cutting the blind at the notch. The point is that you can fold the pocket out of the way of the front piece and the blind. You only need to fold it back enough to give yourself a centimeter seam allowance. Then, to keep those two together, we're going to make a very small line of stitching over them. Hold the front trouser and the blind next to one another as you put it through the machine. It's best if you can stitch diagonally and very close to the bottom of the pocket opening, as it'll give you a good point of reference for joining the front and back trouser. Then, a second nearer the edge will keep it in place more securely. Then, you're lining up the seam allowances of the front trouser and the blind against the seam allowance of the back trouser. 
inside to inside. Don't forget about the inlay, you marked the actual seam allowance with chalk and a basting stitch. The inlay is going to stick out while you're aligning your seams, and when you sew it for that matter. Baste the two pieces together, or three depending on how you count. So with a 1cm seam allowance, and there's really no need to back tack at the top or the bottom. Now there's this thing called a zip foot, which is a type of machine sewing foot. It means that half the foot isn't there, allowing you to machine, where you might have one flat side and the other side you have a bunch of fabric, like, for example, just spitballing. A front row has a pocket folded out of the way, I don't have one of those. And if you don't either, your stitch is liable to be pushed off course and you'll end up with a bent line of stitching. Just go back over it and try to correct it. What is also rather important is that the outside of the bottom of the pocket opening is where the back trouser first meets the front. Check that it is so. Iron the seam open. Technically we should be ironing it flat first, but apparently I forgot. Iron the inlay to the back and the seam allowance to the front of course, but the seam allowance is split at the bottom of the pocket, so we'd just like to cut the small line of stitching we made holding the blind and front together in order to get them both to lay straight on either side of the sleesha. Now let's prick stitch the pocket opening. I'd suggest chalking a line while you can't reliably stitch a straight line. I'd suggest less than a centimeter, but more than half a centimeter. I've done about three quarters of a centimeter. Secure the thread somewhere unobtrusive and get to pricking. Bear in mind that with thicker materials, you won't be able to simply send it through, not unlike stitching a D-tack. You'll have to push the needle all the way through and send it back up two to three millimeters ahead. Next order of business is bar tacking and felling the sleesha to the inlay. Bar tacks should be done at the exact point that the pocket opening starts and finishes. The new silk thread video is up, so I won't get too deep into how. But I'm mooring the thread somewhere it won't be seen, making the bar, coiling it, and securing it again. And I'm doing both of those before securing the pocket's inlay. Fold about a centimetre of the silicia inwards and baste it to the trouser inlay, and simply fell them together. From this, it's not too hard to experiment with, say, a straight pocket, or changing the slant. I rather like having a small sub-pocket in my pocket, keeps the keys from rattling. I'd also suggest trying, to make, trying out making one with a check or a stripe. And to clarify, the check and the stripe on the front, the blind, and the back should all match up, but you knew that. 